Cinema 5D at CineGear 2017 is brought to you by b &H, the professional source for all your video needs. Panasonic, cinematic moments for your production. Schneider, it starts with the glass. Manfrotto, imagine more. And Tilta, arm your camera. We're here with Alex from Canon. Hi, Alex. Hello. Uh, you just announced a very interesting new camera a couple of days ago, the C200. Can you give us a little run through because this is the first time we see it in real life. Absolutely. So the C200 has that big feature that everyone was talking about, the 4K RAW light, which is something brand new for Canon. It's going to be an internal RAW recording to the CFAS card slot, and that's kind of the highest end that you can do in the camera. And then there's this, this gap to do on the MP4, which is 150 megabits per second in 4K UHD. So it's not doing anything to take the place of the C300. The C300 sits really nicely in the middle uh, at 410 megabits. So if you're someone doing more of a documentary or long form content, that's really what you're going to want to go for. But now we have this brand new proprietary way of doing a uh, reduced file size in our RAW. So it's really amazing new science that we have. And we've actually made RAW a lot easier to use. We have software now that you could transcode this RAW into 4K 12-bit 444 ProRes files. So essentially we have made a RAW a lot easier to handle. So it's basically, is it as good as the RAW you can get with, you know, a C700? So the raw, our RMF file is our full raw. This is a new version of that called um, CRM, Canon Raw Movie. So it's a self-contained file as opposed to our RMF, which was every frame was an individual file. So it's a little bit similar to like looking at an MOV or a QuickTime. It's, it's a self-contained piece. Um, up to 4K 30 frames, visually they are identical. Once you start going into the 4K 60, because this only does 10-bit 4K 60, that's when the C700 is going to be that more powerhouse that you're going to want. So 4K 2398, 4K 2997, identical. And a fifth of the size, so you can actually record a seat pass. You don't need Codex or you don't need Atomos or Odyssey. You can do it now internally to a media that we don't even make. So the prices on that are going to be competitive and, and come down. The CFAS, yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, it's an interesting camera. It's something that I think nobody expected. Um, but it's also, it's weird in a way because it's high and low end in one camera. Yep. And it's kind of missing the middle. Exactly. So who do you target as a customer? Because I, if I'm thinking, if it's like an indie production house, you know, they they might need, like, you wouldn't use this for a broadcast documentary, mm -hmm. but you might use it for a commercial. Exactly. So, but I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's two of the extremes in yeah. a way. Yeah, I think um, one thing to remind people, if you like the C100 Mark II image, it's uh, 35 megabits per second, 4208 bit. So not a, a, a great spec camera, but the image people really like, because we did very well with that C100. So if you, if you remove the raw light from this camera, it is really just an upgrade to the C100 Mark II. I really see, you know, this is the camera that I would personally want to own right now, because the price point is great. If I had certain projects that demanded that raw, I could do it. I would just have to have more storage on hand. But a lot of the other stuff I would do would be more documentary or maybe like a chef's table kind of style thing. And that one, would you would want to use the MP4. So if the 4208 bit is not something that is desirable, you want 422 10-bit, that's again where the C300 Mark II is going to come in. And it has time code and some of these other things that we've kind of not put into this camera to keep it lighter, to keep it more price uh, cost effective. So that, there's no time code function in the camera? There is time code, you just, there's no gen lock situation. So if you wanted to have multi-camera, you know, you, and I think with like, you know, new pluralize and those types of features, it, it's not as necessary. But if you have to have that gen lock sync, that's why we still have the 300 series cameras. So you guys also improved a lot in terms of uh, slow motion capabilities because that's one thing where Canon was always a little bit behind the competition. Um, what's, what are the slow mo uh, capabilities of this camera? So we're doing 120 frames in HD with, without a crop. And one thing that we've finally added is a one button push to get to that, that slow motion and a one button push again to get out of it. So something that we've been like, please, this is what people want. They need to get to that, that slow motion very fast. You can program any of our buttons to be that when you're shooting in HD. In 4K, and this is to the MP4, this isn't the raw light, you get 4K 60 frames in UHD. So we are offering higher frame rate in 4K. We're offering 60 in HD as well, and the 120 without the crop. Is it possible to record raw in 1080? 
No, it's just 4K. It's, it locks you in at that 4096, 2160. So UHD, so you're getting that that slightly um, 16 by 9 instead of 17 by 9 if you're doing MP4. But this is, is getting you at that 4096, full 4K, 17 by 9. Is it also doing DCI? Yes, only in the raw light though. So internally, it's UHD, you know, 3840 by 2160. The the 16 by 9 aspect ratio for 4K. Um, if you want the DCI, you have to go raw light. Um, and then the output actually on the HDMI is UHD as well. So it opens up recording third-party recorders and stuff. The only limitation is there's no log coming out of that HDMI. So if you're looking to do log, you're going to want to record internally on this camera. Okay. Can you run us quickly through the ergonomics of this camera? Because I think this whole monitor piece is a lot enhanced compared to the C300 Mark One and Two. Mm -hmm. um, so that's quite interesting. Yeah, it, it definitely will be a learning curve when you first grab it. It was kind of uh, funky at first, but it's a, a huge improvement in terms of how solid it is. So any angle I kind of put it at, it will hold to. So if I wanted to do more, you know, with my chest here, but I wanted the the camera a little more angled, I can do that. If I wanted you to be able to watch while I'm shooting, I can do those types of things. So it's very flexible. I can keep it up for you know the high angle kind of shot, and then tilt it down when I want to, you know, kind of protect it. So really, really interesting um, new uh, way to mount the LCD. You'll also see that there's quarter 20 screws here and here. You can actually remove the handle and put the monitor directly onto here using this articulating. So if you wanted something without the top handle, it's a little more streamlined, you can do that as well. And then also the mic mounts directly onto the camera as well because you'll see we've added XLRs right onto the body now, which is another upgrade. So, so that's not the problem anymore, not having any XLRs once you put the camera on a gimbal or something like that. Exactly, and then you don't you don't have to worry about rigging it back up again. Or if the monitor L or LCD breaks, you're not you know without uh, XLR inputs anymore. Cool. Uh, pricing, availability, I think they're different versions of the camera, right? Yes. So we have a 200, which is what you're seeing here, and it comes with everything with the LCD, the bracket, the grip. Um, uh, 7500 and then we'll have the B model which actually won't have an EVF on it and it'll just be bodily only It'll be six thousand dollars so we're thinking the B camera is more for people who already own accessories and maybe don't use our EVF or, or don't like the quality of it and they want a little bit more competitive price point um, that camera is going to be for that person but most of our customers in this C100 level are single operator users so they'll probably want the LCD and the grip but we're eager to see you know what the market kind of dictates Okay, great. Uh, in terms of sensor, is it the same as the C300 Mark II? Um, it's very similar in nature to the sensor. Uh, what is improved though on it is the new processor. So we've got two DV6 processors. So when you're thinking about the image, the sensor is an important part, but it's also the processing and also the lens. Those three things kind of come together to create it. So even if we do have similar sensors in our products, we always have usually different engines driving them and different software that kind of keep it to the same area. So. Um, in terms of is it the same sensor, it's very similar, but the new processors is really what is enabling us to do the raw light and the dual pixel AF and, and the 120 actually. The base sensitivity is the same? It's still at 800, but you can you can actually take this down to 100 if you are shooting in our log modes as well. So it's still available for uh, bright lights, but I would keep it at 800 because your uh, dynamic range protection starts to shift as you as you go lower than 800. You get a, a cleaner image, uh, less noise, but you also start losing that highlight roll off. Yeah, but it does match the C300, that's why I'm asking, so oh, you can. Yeah. Absolutely. This camera will match very, very well in terms of HD to a C300, 4K to the C300 Mark II. Um, but that raw light kind of puts it in this whole new category. I, I really think we've finally brought raw to uh, a mass consumer audience because um, I was able to process it on a MacBook Pro with a USB drive, and that's one of those things that it was really hard to do with RAW uh, before. So we've kind of opened it up to this larger market. In terms of software compatibility with that RAW format, um, I think you've announced it's going to be supported by DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut. What about Premiere? We're, we're working with all the NLE companies, and, and I think that we'll support it, but as of now, all we really officially announced is uh, DaVinci and Avid. But we will have the Canon software that will allow you to transcode into ProRes, um, um, open EXR and DPX files as well. So it's one of those things where I think that right off the bat the, the Canon software is going to be what people are going to use for the raw light and they're going to finish in that ProRes 444 um, as almost like a master if you think about it. Because you can copy both over but the 444 ProRes is usually what 
people are delivering these days, especially in like higher end broadcast world. So I think that that becomes a master almost. So last but not least, I want to mention the dual pixel autofocus, which is in these cameras as well, as well, right? Yeah, so in the original C100, it was only in the center, and then with certain STM lenses, you could do the face detection. Now we have a new LCD that's touchscreen, and it's opened it up just like the C300 Mark II to 80% of the sensor, and you can move the box wherever you want. So that's the other upgrade that kind of makes it the, the newer generation of the cameras. Cool. Uh, when will it be available? We were told August, so very soon. Very excited. I think we're going to start pre-ordering very soon, so I would jump on it early because I think this is going to be a, a very popular product. Awesome. Yeah, I think so too. Thanks for this, Alex, and uh, thanks everybody for watching. This is um, Cinema 5D at Cinegear 2017, and stay tuned.